Um, good evening. Good evening, everyone. Um, uh, wherever you're joining me from, be it Gambia, England, Scandinavia, America, I'm saying good evening to you all. Um. <coughs> oh boy I hope you all are doing alright Doing okay I see um, Social media is really hot Very very hot today Oh thank you, thank you I see all the comments Telling me about my hair Thank you I appreciate it. Yeah, I've got some really nice braids. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I love my hair. I spend a lot on my hair because I like my hair to be neat. I didn't have time all these days to fix my hair because I was so so busy with this Bob um, Keta issue. And then. Um, um, Cow balde, cow. It's not that cow. Um, I I um I sweat a lot because I'm I'm diabetic. Um, I have diabetes and um, I'm on insulin, so trust me, anything that is above a certain temperature doesn't work for me, and that's why I sweat a lot. So, I mean, even in winter, I sweat so bad I have to get up and change. Or probably change the bed sheets or something because it gets really wet. I sweat really, really bad. Um, I think it's my diabetes. I'm sure, hundred percent. I mean, <laughs> the doctors have not said anything. I've complained and complained, but <coughs> but I, I I definitely think that's the reason why. Uh so I don't like the heat. I think I'm the only only African that hates the heat. You know, I don't like the heat at all. So I'd rather <coughs> stay in a very cool place. And the fan doesn't help because when I put the fan on, then, of course, you can hear my chest. So that's what, that's what happens. I sweat a lot, a whole lot. <laughs> the feminists will be jealous of your hair. <laughs> oh, Lord. Anyways, anyways. Um, today, I'm not going to even talk much about the law per se today um i'm just going to to allow us to have a conversation we're going to have a conversation and the conversation is going to be centered around everything that has happened today well, the past few days but but more so today um, sorry, I'm just trying to get my laptop on. Oh, since my battery is running low, whatever. Um, so can you guys hear me clearly? Can Can you hear me clearly? Am I Am I clear? Am I all right? Am I okay? Before I um I start um talking proper, am I all right? Am I all right? Am I good to go? <coughs> <coughs> Am I good to go? All right. So I will start by um by asking a few a few rhetorical questions. Rhetorical in the sense that the questions are not really meant to be answered. They are just questions that are meant to to steer your thoughts, to to invoke some sort of um, of deep thinking, and um, I will attempt. I will attempt um, during the course of this of this um, of this live video to to answer 
um, some of the questions that um, that I am now going to ask. <coughs> so, the first the first thing I saw online today was um, a lot of people saying. Um, Okay, where are the feminists? Where are the feminists? Now that Sainabu has been charged, now that Sainabu has been remanded, where are the feminists? That's the first question. That has um, been everywhere, really. And people are talking about that. There's the other question that I see people asking and that is what will happen to Bob Ketter's two kids now that both the father and mother have been remanded, both have been charged for a serious offence, all the offences are capital offences meaning they attract either the death penalty or life imprisonment. What happens to their two daughters? I've seen the other side. I mean, I don't believe there are sides, but it seems as if um, everything um, um, has been divided. You know, there's a division right across the middle with regards to this ongoing trial so i see i watched um um mama's video where she was saying that where are you guys where are the people that actually advocated for uh, for sainabu to be charged to be brought to to face justice now you're happy now you're satisfied own own take ownership of what has happened celebrate i mean to borrow her words she said you need to own your own shit then of course you have the other side that are asking now that sayin abu has been charged what happens to bob is Bob going to be free tomorrow? Is, is he going to work as a free man tomorrow? And then <coughs> there's the bit where people are saying that the feminist, the feminist movement that was behind Sainabu are actually responsible for her current predicament. That they are the architect of everything that has happened to her. So just as they are saying that people should own, take ownership of whatever it is that has happened to, to Sainabu. And people should celebrate. But on, on the other side, people are also saying that you all supported her. You all encouraged her to behave and act in the manner and way she did. So you all must take responsibility for whatever it is that has happened. So that is so these are the discussions that 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 have been going on. Now, like I said, my my talk today is not going to be much on law but rather on substantive reasoning rather than it's going to be on on a human instinct a human a humanness on what we understand from everything that is going on one one i want to i want to i want to correct some facts 
I want to bring some facts and I want to lay bare. I want to, I want to, I want to, I want to talk about it in a very transparent, in a very straight manner. I want to bring a logical, a logical backing to the events that have been, um, 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 have been, um, going on and the, the rhetoric that we see coming from, from one end. So for example, the there is this and, and and okay there is this notion that the alleged victim is a 15 year old victim or at least she was 15 at the commissioning of the crime of the event of whatever happened the alleged offense now what i see and what i hear is for example when you watch um if you listen to mama linger today she did mention that and a lot of other people with um their own ideas and ideologies have said and asked the same question and the question is or the statement that they have always said that who will not believe a 15 year old when they come to you and explain a story or now say that they have been raped this has been the slogan of the feminist movement in the gambia and you see i i keep i keep repeating and saying and referring to them as the feminist movement in the gambia because i believe the type of feminism that is propagated in the gambia it's absolutely different from what I know and understand as feminism. It is, it is radically different from what I understand to be feminist ideologies. It is different from the feminist theories that I learned in school. What I see being propagated in Gambia is absolutely different. Different from everything that we have seen or we have we, we know to, to amount to what feminism and true feminism is all about. So what the, the, the theme, the theme that the feminist movement in the Gambia have been actively, actively propagating is this notion that who will question a 15 year old child? Who will question a 15-year-old child? And if you're not careful, if you're not careful, you yourself will begin to question yourself and say, yes, if I have my 15-year-old daughter who walks up to me and say to me that I have been raped, will I disbelieve my 15-year-old daughter? The honest answer is no, I will not disbelieve my 15-year-old daughter. So I have pondered about this. I have thought about it. You see, those who are close to me who know me very well will tell you, when everybody's sleeping at night, I don't sleep. I don't sleep at night. I mean, it's 2 o'clock or 3 o'clock in the morning that I make my plans, that I, that I think about what I'm going to do the next day, that I go over what somebody has said to me, what somebody has done to me. It's a, it's a 2 o'clock at night that I count my money, that I, I, I try to think about what I spent, who I gave money to that I was supposed to give, who loaned me money that hasn't paid me back. You know, it's really late at night that I sit and I think. And, and trust me, I have heard so many a night that I sat down to think and understand this agenda, this notion that is being sold to us. That who would question a 15-year-old that walks up to you and say, I have been raped. The honest truth is nobody would question a 15-year-old. Nobody would question your daughter. But I am going to tell you today what is the exception in this, in this, in this scenario. The exception is that this is no ordinary 15-year-old. This is a 15-year-old that is in the custody of a woman that has just been divorced by her husband. 
This is a 15 year old that is in the custody of a bitter spouse, a bitter partner that has had a very, very bad separation. This is a 15 year old that is not only in the custody of an ex-wife, but this is a 15 year old that depends solely material. I mean, I mean, financially, holistically and morally depends, has full support, has support system is dependent on the ex-wife. So this is not an ordinary scenario of a 15 year old that walks to a parent and say, I have been raped. This is a 15 year old. That is a minor, because this is what has been sold to you. That the 15 year old is a minor. But remember, this minor is a minor that does not have, legally, does not have capacity to give consent. So therefore, this minor is under the tutelage. It's under the direction. It's under the custody of an adult. An adult who has just divorced with her husband. So this is the distinction. The second part to it is that this is not only an ordinary 15 year old. This is a 15 year old that at the time that the complaint was made and lodged at the police station was already three months pregnant and going into her fourth month of pregnancy. The question, and what the feminists would not tell you, is that what happened within that three months, going to four months, that this alleged, I can't say alleged, she was raped, regardless, somebody did, because she does not have the capacity. So this minor, this particular minor, was pregnant for three to four months. And this minor was under the custody of an adult. What the feminist movement will not tell you or will not mention is what happened to those three months that this girl was pregnant. What happened to the three months going to four months that this little girl, this 15 year old, was pregnant and under the custody of the sister that everybody is saying is fighting for her? Was the sister fighting for her within those three months when she was not yet divorced with her husband and she was living with her little sister? Now, some people will tell you that, oh, she only found out. But then if you tell me she only found out, I would begin to ask you, how did she find out on the day that her divorce was pronounced? How do you find out that your 15-year-old was three months pregnant, going to four months on the day that your divorce was pronounced? And then you begin to ask the second question, how does it occur? That you only lodge a complaint at the police station on the day that your divorce was pronounced. These are the circumstances that are surrounding the 15 year old. So when they come to you and tell you and or ask you, will you disbelieve your 15 year old daughter? You got to ask them the question here. Was my 15 year old daughter pregnant for three months under my custody when I found out that she was pregnant or when she told me that she was raped? Was my 15 year old daughter who was under my custody and raped allegedly under my custody did I only find out, did she only come to me on the day that I divorced her mom? Or the day I divorced her aunt. Or the day I separated with my wife. These are the unique circumstances that have surrounded this particular issue. So it is not an ordinary 15 year old. That walks up to you and says good afternoon I was raped. It is a 15 year old. That you found out was raped on the day that you got divorced with your husband. 
It is a 15 year old that you did not only found out that she was raped on that particular day, but you also found out that she was three months pregnant living under your roof in your home and you're taking care and took responsibility of ch or, or charge of that 15 year old. Now, we go to the second part. And that is the fact that I see a great divide. I see a great wall. Now, suddenly, the feminist movement, the Gambian feminist movement, that has been calling, that has been calling for and saying that they propagated the slogan of I believe her. I believe her. They said you cannot question the victim. Whatever the victim says is gospel. Whatever the accused person says is a lie. <coughs> I want you to pay particular attention to this. They have consistently argued that what the victim said or alleged victim said is the gospel truth. What the accused person is saying is a lie and the accused person must prove his innocence. All of a sudden, all of a sudden, Today, today, a part of the feminist camp, a part of their agenda, an individual who was in the heart of their agenda was charged with an offense that is a capital offense in court. So that individual has now become an accused person. So I don't know if you guys are getting my drift. I'm going to, I'm going to go back. I'm not sure you are getting my drift. The Gambian feminist movement have propagated an agenda that all accused persons must be saying the truth, that you must believe them, you must give them support, you must stand by an accused person, you must stand by an, an alleged victim. Okay? Now, Sena Bumbai, Sena Bumbai, who these so-called feminists have given the greatest support, has suddenly become an accused person. She has been charged for an offense. So Sainabu is now in equal power with Bob Keta, who's an accused person. But all of a sudden, the feminist agenda has now changed and they want you to believe the accused person. They do not want to believe Bob. They want Bob to, to prove his innocence. Bob is an accused person. You want Bob to prove his innocence in court, even though we all know as a lawyer that the burden of proof is on the prosecution. It is the prosecution that should prove a case against Bob. It is not for Bob to prove his innocence. But all of a sudden, they are telling you all these beautiful things and saying, Sainabu took the baby to hospital, Sainabu rushed her to Afrimed, Sainabu airlifted her and took her to Dakar, Sainabu did this, Sainabu did that, who would do that to their own knees, everything, we saw all the effort. All of a sudden, they are now putting up a defense for an accused person. When they have always and were always and just yesterday were propagating the agenda that an accused person must go to court and prove their innocence. Now, what I, Melville, I am saying is, let Sainabu go to court and prove her innocence. Because that is the yardstick that the feminist movement have used to measure all accused persons. I don't know if I'm making sense to you. And I want them to think and I want them to understand. Because you, you, they need to know the people that are propagating such a false agenda of a feminist ideology need to understand that that is not the way to, 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 to advance an agenda of feminism. Because if you do that, if you do that, it's going to catch up with you. So now it has caught up with them. And all of a sudden, the accused person that they have always, 
always banded and, and branded as bad, telling them they are grown men, it's a grown man, Bob is a grown man, let him go and, 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 and prove his innocence in court. Let's allow the court system to take its cause. Let's allow the justice system to take its cause. All of a sudden, their star baby, Sena Mumbai, is now an accused person, has been charged with a capital offense, having to defend himself, in, defend herself in court. So what I am going to do is, I am going to take the yardstick, the measurement that the feminist movement is propagating that every accused person must defend themselves, must prove their innocence, to say that Sena Bumbai is now an accused person, let Sena Bumbai go to court and let Sena Bumbai prove her innocence. Is that not common sense? Is that not logic? Sainabu has been charged with a capital offence. Bob has been charged with a capital, of, capital offence. You have always advocated that Bob should defend himself. You have always advocated that Bob should go and prove his innocence. Now I am telling you that you need to allow people to be an advocate for Sainabu Mai to go and prove her innocence in a court of law. Even though I don't believe that. Even though that is not what that is not my belief, but this is the belief that you have propagated. So you will have to allow people to enjoy themselves. Because this is what you have created. It is a platform that you yourself have created. One rule for all. Absolutely. You want every alleged victim to be believed and every accused person to be disbelieved? Now you have it in your plate. You have it in your camp. Your star baby. Your star baby that has caused you to, to enter into vicious attacks. Attacking people. Trying to punch holes into their credibility. Into their person. Your star baby is now an accused person has been remanded by a court order. What you should advocate now is for your star baby to go and prove her innocence in court. Because this is what you have advocated for. I am not happy and I will not celebrate Sena Mumbai or whatever is her predicament. I refuse to do that. I respect the rights of everybody to do what they want to do. But I refuse to celebrate it and I will not celebrate it because there's absolutely nothing to celebrate about that. However, it is a teachable moment. It is something that people would learn from. It is something that people would look at and understand that life, life revolves. And today you might be at one end of the spectrum and tomorrow you might be at the complete opposite side of the spectrum. Your vantage point of view would be radically different. How you see things today from your, from your opportunistic vantage point of view might be radically different tomorrow. You have always looked at things from the side of the, of the victim. You have always propagated an ideology that supports the victim. And all of a sudden, all of a sudden, in the heart of your movement, your star baby has automatically metamorphosed into uh, an accused person. And that is the fact. No matter how you twist it, no matter how you look at it, no matter what you say, no matter what you do, you guys will, you, you, you can shout all you want, you can insult all you want, you can, you can scream all you want, you can do all the Facebook lives that you want. But the fact is, at this point in time, at this material point in time, your star baby is an accused person. Your star baby has to put up a defense in court. Your star baby has to prove her innocence based on the yardstick that you, the feminist group, the feminist camp, have propagated with all your might.
You never thought, you never thought that you would ever one day be on the part of the accused person. You have always thought that life would always be seen from the victim point of view. You have always thought that everything revolves around the victim and the accused person is a condemned animal. But all of a sudden, destiny, faith, have brought you on the side of the accused person. And you will begin to understand the reason why I, Melville Roberts, am calling for an overhaul in our justice delivery system. Because right now, you, the feminist movement, will begin to see how the, 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 the justice system is not favorable to an accused person. Just the other day, I was on a live video where I said to them, and I explained that the justice system, a criminal justice system, is not fair to an accused person. It is only there to protect the accused, the, 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 the alleged victim. And for that, I was advocating for a fair and just justice system. And you said to me that I was defending Bob. You said to me I was defending Bob. But all of a sudden, you now have and will be sympathetic and would want to sympathize to somebody who is now on the other end of the spectrum, on the other end of the justice system, on the other end, a person who is not the alleged victim but has suddenly become the accused person. And that is why it is very destructive it is very destructive to propagate a feminist ideology that is one-sided. I could see the pain in all your videos. And genuinely so. I could see the pain. I could see the hurt. I could see the anger. Because all of a sudden, your brand, your star baby, is no more. Your star baby is now an accused person. How did it feel to see your star baby being arranged in court? You never thought a day like that would happen. And that is why when you propagate, when you propagate a real feminist agenda, a feminist agenda that looks for equity on both sides, a feminist agenda that does not care whether it's a girl or a boy, a feminist agenda that believes that there should be a justice system that should be equal to both the accused person and the victim, where the constitutional rights of both will be respected and upheld, then you would begin to understand. You will begin to understand and you will begin to see reason. And then you would begin to, to appreciate and collaborate and know that this is a fight that you cannot win alone. This is a fight that must be collective. This is a fight that we all must come together and fight for a, for a oneness, a oneness approach in our criminal justice delivery system. I hear you say that you did not do anything to say, Nabu. You played no part. But this is where, as Africans... We need to understand our circumstances. This is why as Africans we need to understand that Western laws, Western ideologies were patterned according to their culture. There is no Western law that was legislated in oblivion. You would never go to America and find a law in their statute books that is foreign to them. You will never come to England and you find laws in their statute books that is foreign to the United Kingdom. The laws are patterned according to their culture. It is patterned according to what revolves around them. It is patterned according to their society. Laws are not made in abstract. Laws are not legislated in oblivion. There is always a mischief to a law. A law is always there to correct. A law is always there to bridge a gap. A law is always there to set a loophole. 
A law is not legislated in oblivion. A law is not abstract. A law is not monotonous. A, the law lives. It lives. And that is why when you when you that say you care about Zainabu and you saw Zainabu in the manner and way she was going please don't tell me don't use the excuse of people provoked her don't tell me that I would have expected people of your caliber People of your level of maturity. People of your level of exposure. People of your level of experience. And a people of a level of passion that you preach and talk about. Would have cautioned her. And tell her, hey, girlfriend, stop. This is not the right approach. Yes, your sister has been a victim. Lay low. Stay on the side. Do your thing. And allow the justice system to work for you. This should have been your sermon to say now. This should have been your sermon to Sainabu. The backlash that Sainabu is getting now is not as a result of hate. It is not as a result of hatred for her person. It is as a result of a condemnation of her public actions. The backlash that Sainabu Mbai has faced is not because people hate the person of Sainabu Mbai. It is not people dis people disliking Saina Bumbai. It is not people being jealous of Saina Bumbai. We have seen people who are more well materialistically, financially endowed more than Saina Bumbai. The fact is that we saw a Saina Bumbai that came into the public domain to show that she does not care, to show that she does not give a damn, to show that she will at all costs destroy the life of her ex-husband this is the brand this was what was sold to the gambians this was what the gambian saw and rather than you the feminist movement caution her stop her pull her to you draw her to you and teach her and tell her what is right no you gave her a false hope you encouraged her. You placed her. You pitched her against the public. You pitched her against Gambian. And today she is facing the backlash that you guys supported and propagated. That is the fact. I do not care if you accept it. I don't care if you take it. That is the undiluted fact. You don't have to agree with me. You can go and do a Facebook live and cost me for all you care. But the fact is, you helped her. You helped her. You worsened her predicament. You brought her to nothingness through your help. You people are experienced. You people are living in the Western world. You people have traveled the world. You people hold yourself up to be matured, to be intelligent. You should have put a break on Saina Bumbai. You should have drawn Saina Bumbai close to you and, and, and shadow her with your protecting wings. And then you would have seen a Gambia that would have rallied behind her. You would have seen a Gambia that would have sympathized with her. You would have seen a Gambia that would have identified with her. But no, that is not what you did. You saw it from a victim's point of view. 
You condemn the accused. You celebrated the victim. You thought you were fueling an agenda. But that is what has destroyed your type of feminism in the Gambia. The very foundations of your feminist ideology have been shaken to the very core. The very foundations of your ideology, your type of feminism has been shaken. It has been destroyed to the very core. I am not saying feminism will not rise again in Gambia, but I'm telling you it will take eternity for you to have the type of foundation that you need to propagate your agenda. Because people do not believe in your type of feminism anymore. The people have rejected your type of feminism. The people are disgusted with your type of feminism. You cannot... You cannot effectively propagate an, an, an ideology, an agenda that you pitch one against the other. You cannot propagate effectively an agenda where you build two camps and put a divide in between. Your responsibility as true, honest and sincere feminist is to tell the truth, to speak the truth. To look at things both from a victim point of view and an accused person point of view. To advocate for a system, a criminal justice system that would be right to the victim and right to the accused person. Where both of them would have equal stance in the delivery of justice. This is what your ideology should have been. It is okay to come online and cause. It is okay to come online and jive if he matter, I don't care. But the honest truth is you care. The honest truth is you care because you know what has happened today has hit the very heart of your agenda. Oh yes, you care. You cannot tell me you don't care. You do care. You care and you care deeply. You care and you care deeply because you live for this. You drink for this. You eat for this. You talk because of this. So do not tell me you don't care. Because that will be false. You do care. You care because you are seeing the very foundations that you have built. The very foundations that you have toiled for. You are seeing it scatter. You are seeing it fizzle. Before your very eyes. And you can only have yourself to blame. You cannot propagate a feminist ideology based on hatred. You cannot propagate a feminist ideology based on jealousy. You cannot propagate a feminist ideology based on anger. And more so, you cannot absolutely propagate a feminist ideology based on your personal experience of life. Not all men are dogs. Not all men are a-holes. They are good, credible men. The same men that you look, the same way you look at your fathers, the same way that you look at your brothers, the same way like you look at your sons, there are men like that. There are men like that. Your advocacy must be honest. Your advocacy must be truthful. Your advocacy must be sincere. You should be able to look up. Look up a victim in the eye. Regardless of that victim being a man or a woman. And if you know. The circumstances are fact that are surrounding the alleged victim are lies. You should be able to come out and condemn that victim. You don't blindly support a victim and say the victim is right. When every single eye and every single mind knows that victim is lying. You cannot do that. Because you will defeat the very purpose for which you stand for. You don't have to like me. You do not. Because I don't care. You don't feed me. You don't add to my growth. You say, if it, what, what if it was your daughter? 
If my daughter walks up to me, uh, will you say your daughter, I don't believe you? Every single one of you feminists or activists that has a boy child, I will ask you the same question. If your boy child walks up to you, will you say, no, I don't believe you? Will you say so? The fact is you look at things from your vantage point of view. You look at things the way you want to look at it. You see things the way you want to see things. Feminism is not bad. Feminism is phenomenal. Feminism is great. But feminism must be honest. Feminism must be sincere. You do not propagate a feminist ideology because you want to be known. You do not propagate a feminist ideology because you want people to see you. You do not propagate a feminist ideology because you want to lay your hands on projects and NGOs and workshops and little funds here and there. No, that is not feminism. Feminism has to come from the heart. You have to live it. You have to understand it. Today, Sainabu has been charged. I will not celebrate. I will not celebrate the fact that she's in a predicament. No, I will not. I will not and nobody can make me celebrate that. Others choose to celebrate it. I respect their rights to do whatever they want to do. But I say I choose not to celebrate it. Saying Abu being incarcerated has got nothing to do with me. It adds no value to me. My humanness cannot allow me to celebrate another person being in jail. My humanness cannot allow me to celebrate another person being charged for a capital offense. However, it is a teachable moment. It is a learning experience. For every single human being. Because as humans you must understand your limitations as a human being. You must understand that as human you are a human. You are not God. You must, all, you must understand your humanness. You must understand your limitations. You must understand the yardstick. The parameters of which you have to operate as a human being. You can never play God. Because the day you try to play God, God will humble you. The day you try to play God, God will, he will reduce you. The day you try to play God, God will bring you to nothingness so that his name will be exalted and people will look around and say, yes, there is a God somewhere. Today, you're all saying, oh, but her kids, her kids this, her kids that. Did you ever reach out to Sainabu and tell her, Sainabu, you have kids, don't behave like this. Did you ever reach out to her and tell her, Sainabu, we are a people of culture. Sainabu, we are a people of culture. Sainabu, Hamun Lee. It is your ex-husband, yes, yeah, Sainabu, keep it on the law. We don't know this. Saying about this Gisland my business, this public fighting, this public crucifixion, we don't know it as Gambians. Saying about stay in your lane, go to your court, support your sister. Our culture does not understand this. That is what you should have sold to Saying about. Not to tell Saying about don't care. Oh, in the Western world, this is how we do it. Oh, in America, that's how we roll. Oh, in England, that's how we do it. It's your right. My friend, girlfriend, go out there. Use TikTok how you want it. Go on Facebook. Do it the way you want it, girlfriend. You cheer them on. You cheer them on to their destruction. That is not our culture. 
That is not our culture. That is not what we know as a people. We are a people of value. We have a value system. We are people when even when one person is mourning your neighborhood, the people will not even like, they will not even make, like, I mean, I remember when, when it was one time I had a birthday party and I was, I was doing everything, you know, so prepared to celebrate my birthday. And last minute, I think the day before the birthday, I had ordered food, pre made shopping and everything. A neighbor died. A neighbor died. And what did my mom say to me? You can't do a birthday party here. I asked her, but are we related to them? Why can't I enjoy my birthday? I've spent all my money. I went singing carols. I did Boba job to raise my mom. How can you say I'm not going to have it? My mom said, it's not in my house. If you want to do it, go somewhere else and do it. You can't do it in this house. Those people who are Akus that are watching this video know exactly what I'm talking to, talking about who are my friends. I had to go to my cousins. They're here. They're watching me. I can see them. Seal and f one Jai's house. Auntie Mambi's house, my aunt. I had to go to her house to do my party. My mom said never in her house. And we were not related to them. That is the culture we know. That is the culture identifying with the pain of others. More so the pain. The pain of your ex-husband. Not so, no more so the pain of the father of your own daughters. More so the pain of your own sister. Your own sister that was raped under your custody. There's no way you can say you cannot take responsibility of some sort for that. No way. You were an adult. You were in charge of a minor. Something has occurred with that minor that is not legal. That is not right under your custody. For crying out loud, you must be. I don't want to use a cuss word, man. You must be so irresponsible for somebody to tell you, oh, it's not her fault. Yes, it's not her fault, but it's her responsibility. I didn't do that birthday party in my house. I had to go somewhere else. That is what Gambians expected of Sainabu. Nobody is jealous of Sainabu and her successes. Do you know how many records are broken? Do you know how many academic records are broken? Why will I be jealous of Sainabu? I'm not. I've gone places that some Gambians or most Gambians have never gone. It's on record. Why will I be jealous of Sainabu? I am not jealous of Sainam. But I was shocked at the actions of Sainam. I was shocked. I was shocked that a person whose ex-husband is being tried for, for capital offense, the father of your own two daughters, you were still in the custody of, of, of your sister who was already allegedly raped. I don't expect you to go on TikTok and call for karma. Where are you, karma? I'm ready for you. I want to taste karma. I want to see karma. No, I did not expect that. The Gambian society did not expect that because that is not Gambian. That is not what we know. We are a people of culture. We are a people of value. Who would have... who? Probably even if Sainabu, if Sainabu had not reacted and acted the way she did, Wallahi me, I am sure, Gambians would have come all round and rallied with her and given her the support she needs. They would have given her the support she needs. They would have stood by her. And people have to understand the trial of Bob Keta did not start three days ago. The trial of Bob Keta did not start five days ago. Bob Keta has been on trial forever and ever, amen, for three years. Gambians did not interfere. Gambians did not, Gambians did not even go to court. 
They allowed the justice system to take its cause. But the honest truth is, Gambian saw that the justice system was ineffective. It was biased. It was not moving. It was not, it was not flowing. And people knew and saw that an innocent man was being persecuted, being locked up in remand for close to two years without justice being done. People were fed up because an alleged victim couldn't find closure. The system failed both the accused person and the victim. So you can't come here and want to castigate the entire Gambian Republic and say that everybody hates Sayyidina Bumbay. Who is Sayyidina Bumbay? You, sh you should be asking yourself, who is Sayyidina Bumbay? What is so special about Sayyidina Bumbay? Is Sayyidina Bumbay the, the first rape victim or the first victim that you guys have advocated for? She is not. And you have never seen such widespread condemnation on any of the people that you have supported. That should make you, it should make you to do a rethink. It should make you to do an introspection of yourself and understand what is going on. And that is the fact. Who has ever come and castigated your, 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 your victims? Who? Can't you see the exception? Can't you see the exception? The Aku will tell you when you when you when you yams white now for cover them. I don't know how to explain that in, in Wolof, but I'll say it in English. When you've got the yam, the veg vegetable yam, you know how like this Nigerians would eat yam and plantain, yam, fufu, yam. It says when you cut the yam and you see the white of the yam, of the, of, 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 of the fruit, what you would do in order for it not to get rotten or go bad, you take ash and you rub it on it. When you rub the ash on the yam, when you come back, your yam will be fine. When you yams white, you cover them. You cover them. But no, you want to stand on TikTok and defante with entire. Can you defante with the whole republic? Can you? Somebody was calling me Meldin, 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 Meldin. Everybody was sending me Meldin, Meldin. You think I will go and 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 and, 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 and defante with Meldin? How can I possibly defante with Meldin? Ah. How can I go and defante with Meldin? You, you, you should have understood. You should have been the one to advocate and tell and tell, tell, tell thingy. I'm saying about that. Saying about no. Saying about don't do that. Bull kadef. Saying about violent. Bull and fale. Bull and fale. Don't answer. Don't respond. Saying about just do your thing quietly. Advance your business quietly. But me, me, Melville Roberts and Roberts, me, at the level I am, I go, I sit, I'm saying, I'm answering, Melin, Melin, Rapas, Rapas, Melin, Melin, me, am I retarded? Am I retarded? What, what do I and Melin have in common? What do we share? What platform do we share? What common denominator do we have? Which one? You see me now, I get up on my Facebook Ah, look here, ah, Melville, look there. Melville, I'm going to defend you, Kylie, I'm going to turn to. Kylie, I'm going to turn to. I'm going to turn to, I'm going to turn to, Meldin. I can't, I can't. I can't with you people. I'm going to turn to, Meldin. Me own boy, me own Creole boy. Me, me own Creole boy. I'll, I have nothing to do, nothing to do, than to come on Facebook and say I'm taunting Melding. Am I retarded? 
you know we need to have a yardstick we need to have we need to have a level that we that we we we, we operate on we need to i said it yesterday if 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 a pig if you want to wrestle a pig in the terrain of the pig boy you will not be able to 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 to, to do well because the pig is already in its surrounding it in its famil familiar surrounding the pig is in the mud already and then you want to jump in the mud you go into that mud and then people stand outside they're trying to look which one is melding and which one is melville you don't know who's the difference because melding is melding and melding is rapassing how would you know this one is rapass this one is melding melding is melding melding is rapassing by the time you want to look which one is rapass which one is melding which one is real melding you are lost you don't know you cannot tell anymore from melding to rapass rapass to melding you can't tell my friend give me a break you think i have time for rubbish Me, I will continue to speak my truth. I will continue to advocate for what I believe in. I don't give a damn what you call me. You can call me Melbourne. You can say all bad things about me. You can mention all conspiracy theories about me. I do not give a damn. Because the people that know me, know me. The people that love me, love me. Regardless of what you say, they will still uphold me. They will still love me. They will still stand by me. Your conspiracies, your lies, it doesn't affect me, it doesn't take me anywhere. It doesn't even move me an inch. To hell with Meldin and the camp of Meldin, Meldin. I can't give a damn. When you, re when you are ready, go and practice. Go and practice and learn how to say Melville, then you come back. When you come back and say Melville, then me and you will sit down and have a talk. We will sit down and have a talk. On, until you can Melville and not meld it. You're not my cup of tea. And by the way, she called me and apologized and, and said to me she was sorry. And we laughed about it and moved on. I mean, she's a phenomenal person. She, she was just being used. She was just being used by people that don't have the guts, don't have the audacity to come out and challenge me. Because you know if you come out in the level of Melville and you challenge me in the level of Melville, I will scatter you to pieces. You will wake up in the morning and not be sure what, of the, what side of the bed you woke up from. You want to challenge me. Challenge me in my terrain. Challenge me in my terrain. And I will teach you one of few things. I will teach you a few tricks and until you die, you won't forget it. You won't forget it. But you go and hide behind a, 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 a melding personality, thinking you can attack me. No, I know, I know what it is. So I know it is not the melding. It is the it is the people, the cowards that are hiding behind the melding, the cowards, the people that are lesser than animals, that can't come up and face and man up and say what they want to say. And this is what we are: a weak society. A weak society that hide to propagate a false and evil agenda. The fact remains that we should all fear God. We should all fear God. All of us should fear God. Because we have seen the hand of God in what has happened in the Gambia recently. We have seen the hand of God. Who would have thought? Who would have imagined Boy, even if it's one hour, even if it is one hour that Sena Mumbai spent in detention, who would have thought that that would ever happen? Who would have? Who would have ever, ever, ever ha thought that that would happen? If that does not make you humble, if that does not make you humble, what will? What will? If that does not humble you, what will humble you? And you sit now. It's not a time to throw stones. It's not a time to apportion blame. Me, I condemn everybody that goes out on their platform and insult. I condemn it, regardless of who you are. 
But if that is how they want to operate, let them operate. I respect it. If that is what they are comfortable with, I respect it. I respect it. But I will not do it. So when you make your false and grand statements, don't say that Melville or they are insulting. No, I have never insulted anyone. I have never insulted Sena Mumbai one day in my life. I don't even talk about Sena Mumbai. I don't know Sena Mumbai. But it is my right. It is my right to even go and say that, you know what, from what I have seen, from the circumstances surrounding this matter, I think Sainabu murdered that child. It is my right to think like that. Since when would you determine what I think? Since when would you determine my thought process? It is my right. It is my right. It is also your right to believe that Sainabu never did anything bad. It is your right. It is your God-given right and I respect it. It is your God-given right and I respect it. I respect it. But do not try to clamp on my own rights. Do not clamp or try to restri restrict my thought process. You cannot do that. It is unfair. It is wrong. Things cannot only be seen from your own point of view. And if you ask me, if you ask me sincerely and honestly, Gambians are divided on the issue of sexual offenses and rape because the so-called feminist movement have made it seem to be a genocidal a genocidal warfare. It's like they are on a, on, a, on, a, on a genocidal quest. It's like they are out there to, to, to obliterate the, 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 uh, the men folk. That is how it appears. And I will always make a disclaimer when I speak about the feminist movement in the Gambia that there are some genuine credible ones. I may not agree with everything they do. I may not agree with everything they say, but there are some that are genuine. There are some that are passionate with what they do. Of course, they make the mistakes by getting emotionally involved in some of these things. Because if you have to be objective, you have to, you have to divorce yourself. You have to take the emotions out of, out, out of your, 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 your substantive agenda. If you go with emotion, you're bound to fail. You're bound to fail. Take emotions out of it. Look at it from an objective point of view. Look at it from a holistic point of view. And then you can begin to make an impact. If you put yourself into the heart of what you want to deliver, if you use your personal experience... To, 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 to measure everything that you do, then trust me, you're bound to fail. You're bound to fail. How, how do you think it would look if you have a Melvin supporting a feminist cause? Passionately, with all he's got. How do you imagine one of the feminist, uh, the, the feminist leaders coming to say that, no, we should calm down. This is not right. You cannot continue to subject a, a, an accused person to such inhumane treatment. We would have been a unified voice. We would have been solid working for a common goal and a common agenda. But you think you can put a pitch. You can pitch me against somebody else or you can pitch you against. No, it's not going to work. It's not going to work because all and where it will remain is on your live videos. People will come, they will butter you up. They will tell you yes, they will clap for you and they will be the same people that will come to you and tell you bad and evil things about the so-called people that they are within the same feminist camp with. I've told them this. 
I've told them. I said, a man does not come to me and tell me about a woman. A man never comes to me and tells me about anyone in the feminist camp. It is they themselves, they the feminists, that will come out and speak ill of their counterparts. And that is a fact. So basically, like I said, um, I was not going to talk law today. I was just going to talk about things that were going on and how we approached everything as Gambians. And just to, to say that, let no one fool you that our advocacy is not working. You see, when I came out to talk about the, the charges of conspiracy to commit manslaughter, I don't know if you joined my that video, but I explained that there's no way. In fact, the Fatu, the Fatu network, in fact, um, they 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 kind of tried to um, transcribe my video and they did a post on that. I think um, um, a few other um, online media that you cannot. That my caution to the police was like, you cannot charge anyone with conspiracy to commit manslaughter. Because manslaughter is an accident. So you cannot conspire to commit an accident. And you can tell, you can see from the charges that that conspiracy to commit manslaughter was completely dropped. So don't think that what we're doing, our advocacy is not working. They are listening to us. It is working. We may not know it all. I don't know it all. I don't claim to know it all. I know a little bit, I research, I ask, I learn, I continue to read every day, I continue to improve myself. But together we are making a difference. We are making a difference. And we are going to advocate, it will not go, it is not only going to stop at going to Bob Ketter's trials and calling for a free and, and, and fair justice delivery system. No, we will, we will, we will organize ourselves. We will be strategic. We will engage the authorities. We will engage the powers that be. We will engage the stakeholders. But this is a movement that was born and this is a movement that is going to live. It's a revolution that cannot be stopped. So come out tomorrow in your large numbers. Come out in your large numbers. Go to, go to Banjul. Stand and advocate for what you believe in. Stand and advocate, advo advocate for what you believe in. And in the end, in the final analysis, we are calling for a justice system that would treat both Sainabu and Bob equally. Equally. And I'm saying this again and again and again. Just because Bob Keta has been languishing in jail for two years does not mean that we should advocate for Sainabu to languish in jail for two years. No, that will defeat the movement. That will defeat what we are calling for. We are expecting that the system, we are expecting that the powers that be, we are expecting that the authorities would have learned from the mistakes of the Bob Keta trial, and they would correct it in the Sainabu Mbais trial. That Sainabu will be afforded and accorded a fair, honest, credible, sincere, transparent, and fast justice delivery system. A fast justice and um, dispensation. That is what we are advocating for. We are not hateful. Well, I am not. I'll speak for myself. I have no hate. I have no hate. So, that is all I got to say. And I continue to pray that we will overcome that the Gambia we want will be the Gambia we will have.
go out in your large numbers tomorrow and demand for an honest and just justice system. Go out and demand. Go out and advocate. But whilst you do so, do so peacefully. Respect the police. Respect the law. And whatever you do, do it within the confines of the law. Do it within the confines of the law. I saw a brilliant, brilliant, brilliant post by the police today. They were commending the public. They were commending the public for being law-abiding, for cooperating. That is what we want. The police would know for a matter of fact that they need the people and the people need the police. The police are also victims of the same criminal justice system that we are fighting for. The police are humans. They are brothers, are sisters, are fathers, are mothers. They too have people that have been that have been handicapped by the criminal justice system in the Gambia. They too are victims. So let us go together tomorrow, stay within the confines of the law, and advocate for what we believe in. Together we can do it. Both feminist and both, I think we are all feminist. In honest and sincere sincerity, we are all feminist. We all have a mother that we love. We all have a daughter that we care about. We all have a girlfriend or a wife. We all have that woman that we support. So we were all feminists. But when we do so, let us do so with honesty, sincerity and truth. What we call for is an equitable society. A, an equitable society where both men and women would be given equal treatment. Where a boy and a girl would be given equal treatment and where none would suppress the other. That is the true virtue of a feminist. That is the correct ideology of feminism that we preach. There is no way and time where a man will substitute the place of a woman and where a woman will substitute the place of a man. We need a synergy. And it is for that reason that God created both man and woman and not man and man or woman and woman. We both need each other. We both need to complement each other. We both need to support each other. And let us continue to do that with honesty, with sincerity and with truth. I wish you all a blessed good night and tomorrow we'll come and we'll do the analysis, proper legal analysis on, 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 on the deliberations of, of tomorrow and then we take it from there. So a, a blessed, a blessed um, 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 good night to you all and I pray that God continue to bless you, God continue to guide you, God continue to protect you in all that you do, save you from all harm, all danger in, by God's almighty power. So take care, good night, and I wish you guys all the very best. And thank you for joining me, and thank you for being a part of my story and a part of my life. Good night.